before they picked, and I was like, are they really gonna use two here? I don't, I don't really, I don't really see it, honestly. I don't, I don't know what they're thinking. Maybe he has something specific planned for Protoss. Is maybe they wanted to save him because, uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Honestly. This is this is one of those uh, coach decisions that yeah. it, it just really. It doesn't stand out to you when you look at it from a distance as uh, an obvious pick. But when you're the coach of the team and you make a choice like this, you know, coach is no best. There, there's no doubt about that. And he might be saying, you know what, I'm ready for this. I, I know how Zest plays. I, I'm really good against this specific play style that he's showing, you know, uh, and I can, I can deal with it. So I'm really excited, actually, in, in one way. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, but just excited in, in that... Uh, I really feel like he could show us an amazing game because if he's the one who's being picked here and they're really investing him, because if he loses, then Zest is one game away from taking an all kill. I, I feel like Sue is going to show us an incredible game. He has to, in fact, or his team is in big, big trouble. Yeah, I agree that the coach did make a big decision here, and I feel like Sue is very confident if he was going to be picked here. I, I believe they talked together, and Sue was like, I'm ready. Yeah. Well, looks like the, the players are ready. The lobby is up and hosted. And we're gonna jump into it right away. This is the 2014 round one playoff finals with Brennan and Wolf. Up here in the top left, on a streak right now for KT Rolster, the Red Protoss, Zest. Looking really, really solid. And his opponent to the bottom left for SK Telecom T1. A surprising pick, it's Sue. And uh, we'll see how he does. If if he's actually able to, to pull off this win, he's gonna show an incredible game. And the thing is, it's not to say that Zest is like the best Protoss versus Zerg player there ever was. It's just that he played so well against Sulky, who you would think, uh, just based on his recent results, would actually be better in the matchup uh, in Zerg versus Protoss. The player to win it almost like a, for sure. It was a great pick. Um, if you think about the two players together, just, you know, individually head to head. Um, and then you look at Sue and you think he's just kind of like in this matchup, not specifically great against Protoss and uh, I wonder what he's going to show us. He's going to have to play the game of his life here. Yeah, I something I've noticed recently on this map, Zergs are, have been doing pretty well, you know. Ruro did win a couple of games in, in Protoss I think in the first round. He also did win um, one just yesterday against Rain and you know, maybe Zergs are confident in this map. Maybe they wanted to set on, send out a Zerg on this map. Maybe Sue is very comfortable here. It's a good point, actually, the map. Is he going to take... Okay, so he's going to take his third base first. And then his natural. So most likely it will be a double hatchery before pool. This is a good choice. This is something that will maybe throw off... Uh, this will throw off Zest a little bit. Zest is also playing Nexus first into Forge by the looks of things. If he had a gateway, that's crazy, but no. There's the Forge, so... I mean, with how this plays out, it's it's pretty good for Sue. Um, but Zest is not going to be extremely disappointed with this. He would like to have a gateway up instead, if he knew. Um, but the Forge is not going to be bad for him, and he can eventually tech up as well. Yeah, for Protoss on this map, going for that gateway first can be decently good. You know, you can walk around pretty well. You can get that forge up and get that economy going really fast. But once he comes in here, like you said, once you see the two bases, he's not going to be the happiest Protoss ever. Yeah. Uh... He, he sees the timing of the hatch, and he's got to be like, well, when is your pool? And maybe when he sees the timing of that, he might be like, oh, okay. Looks like he might have gone for three hatch. Yeah, double I mean, the latch. for sure. And he's going to realize it's 100%. He's going to go over and verify right now with his probe. He's going to be a little bit surprised uh, by this. And he's going to see, uh, oh, okay, so this was the hatchery you took first. That's that's a little bit weird. But uh, I guess the idea here is if the probe just comes up and looks at the hatchery time, it might turn around. But if you are able to secure your third base, uh, then you're going to be able to secure your natural, of course. And 
if uh, he had been up against a forge fast expand, for example, the probe would have come up and gotten confused when he saw no hatchery gone to the main base, not when it bought in enough time to actually uh, respond. And of course, he would have been able to add his spawning pool right away. There goes the Cybernetic Force, slightly delayed, like we talked about before. Yeah, you go for that forge first, you have the delay on the gateway coming out, which will lead into that Cybernetic Core, and that will lead eventually into some more tech. The sign is really shiny. <laughs> There's a crazy guy in the back. Everybody saw him. He was here yesterday. Yeah, he cool was. Guy. He, he actually did an AMA on Reddit <laughs> <laughs> about being the guy who told him to aim with his strongholds. So, so. Well, there's uh, a lot of, I mean, I'm just really, I'm, there's a lot of builds that Sue could do. This is a really cool one. This is already like what I, I like to see when you, you have a pick like this because it's really him just playing the map and playing to you know, perhaps his opponent's weaknesses a little bit, faking him out, getting him into his head, getting into his head a little bit and the mid game is, is the question. What are we going to see from Zest? He hasn't added just yet any sort of tech. He's already started the plus one on the other hand. He's getting that warp gate research. No Stargate whatsoever. Doesn't have enough uh, gas for it just yet, but I think we will see it in just a moment, as is a normal way of things. Yeah, as is the way of our people, yes. our people being the Protoss. Um, but no Stargate just yet. Looks like he's saving minerals and gas for something. He could actually... Uh, just, I don't know, he's, he saved a lot. He, he might just take a third base. He does have a probe, it looks like, on the map up there. That would be a good... Or at least something. This oh, is Zealot. Zealot. <laughs> Zealots can't fail the Nexus. Okay, he's adding three gates in the Twilight Council, so he's going to Twilight Tech. And if you save this much gas, you can go Twilight Council into uh, plus two. Ooh, is the Twilight Council going to take? It's already seen. Yeah, he's already seen that, so that's really frustrating. This has got to be frustrating for Zest. It looks like he was having a little trouble deciding exactly what to go for. Um, and then once he did it, it was immediately scouted. Now he's going to go for his third base. Uh, so this so, is uh, this guy came from Japan. Yeah, he did. He turned Esports Square. I see two times. It's like, so that said. Um, we have now the extra gates being added. He's walling off his third base. And if he was planning on doing aggressive timing with his, uh, with his units, he doesn't necessarily have to do that now. And he's, he's transitioning right to that third base. He starts plus two. He starts the blink. He's got all the gateways he needs. He's not, however, continuing to produce probes, making a lot of sentries. So we could just see a timing attack here off the three bases. I've seen this a lot. Um, it's very parting-esque. But I, I have a feeling this is not necessarily Zest's plan. We've seen that a lot on this map, even, in fact. Yeah, a lot of timing attacks that would love to come across the map here. He's adding a robotics as well. There's just four gates here, as well as the four that he has in his main and natural that will add up to eight. And that's going to be a lot of production off of that three bases. And like you said before, he's not making any probes. He's going to have a lot of uh, production just a bit here. He's got to really get it uh, pumped up first, though. Might yeah. want to hit with that blink and the plus two. I mean, he will have an observer to come across the map with it as well with the uh, robotics finishing up right now. He's not making any additional probes. He's definitely going to commit to this now, and uh, he's got so many sentries to help out as well. The, the attack timing is really nice. I mean, he has plus two and blink lining up to the T, and here comes the overseer to confirm. He may even go over and see that there's not even a single probe mining at that third base. Yeah, it's just the Nexus over there. No additional probes were made. Kerno boost on the plus two and the blink as well. He is going to try to go for those rocks towards the left, the at the right side of that natural. Here it comes in the overseer. He's going to see no probes. He's got to know what's going on now. He's making ten roaches, but he doesn't have that plus one yet, and he he does not have burrow yet as well. Yeah, blink is done. So these stalkers trying to escape here, coming over to defend that uh, four pylon. And he's trying to get more units out. You know, plus one, like you said, not done. Burrow's not done. Won't even matter with the Observer. The Roach Warren very exposed here. Here come the Force Fields. Decent Force Fields. And he's going to trap and kill these Roaches essentially for free. He's basically going to get it them for free. A nice time warp behind for the Zerglings. And all these Stalkers doing so much damage. It's these upgrades, man. He's got the plus two and the blink. He's trading so efficiently. He can even take down this Roach Warren. Unfortunate positioning on that here. He's not going to be able to make any Roaches after those 18. Yeah, at least he gets 18 out, man. If that Roach Warren died any fast, it would have been a different story. The Force Field's here very late, on the other hand. He's going to lose a few sentries for it. 
but he loses all the roaches here. I feel like the production though for Zest may allow him to hold. It's all going to be about the micro here. His plus one's about to finish. I mean, it, he still doesn't have the roach worn though. You know, I, if he had the roach worn with the production he has and the minerals he has, holding this might not really be a problem, but with no more roach production, that's... Uh, that's his big concern. Where's the Observer? Yeah, where's the Observer? He has that robotics uh, facility, but he has no Observer just yet. I think yet. it's coming across the map right now. It I is see a little slowly dot. making its way. At the yeah, same time, is. Zest is trying to get a cannon up. Oh, man, if he has the Observer right here, he wins the game. I'm not sure why it's this late, man. Oh, well, five mutas on the way. <laughs> that's going to be an, that's an interesting choice. Five spines as well. If he actually just holds this, then he's going to be in great shape with the mutas transition. But there's the Observer. And it looks like Sue is out of time. Here we go, time warp down on the road to the spine crawler. So many of them in production right now, but they're not done. The Mutalists are not going to be useful in a straight up fight here. They're not going to be useful at all. They're not going to have any upgrades. The Guardian Shield is going to mitigate so much damage here. All the spines have gone down, but five, those two behind, they're going to be taken out now. And now the drones are going to fight here. Nice force field there with all the drones blocking them out. And the plus two with Blink on these stalkers is just so much right now. It's so much, man. He's even killing the destructible plates there for a second. Here we go, force fields down. Broodlings actually come through for him on the other hand. I just don't think he has enough. With well, the next round of warp ends, and continue to blink Stalker Micro. It just doesn't look like that Sue is going to be able to hold. He lost the hatchery and therefore the production. He's trying to continue to produce Mutalists here. I think his, his theory is if he can actually hold this back, the Mutalists will be what he wants. It could be just that, but like you said before, he lost his natural. He only has two bases now against eight gateways from Zest. These super heavily upgraded Bling Stalkers just trade so efficiently. He's going to come in here. It's just not enough units on the ground for Sue. Oh, Making the Overseer goes down. Yeah. I mean, he's got a, a decent amount of zones to buffer this time. Here come those Mutalists. Can he blink away? It looks like he's doing a great job of it. Zealots at the front to buffer as well. And it looks like Sue just does not have enough. He's fighting a 27 Blink Stalker army with seven Mutalists. Not going to happen. Zest looks primed to take his third match in a row against SK Telecom. Sue looking defeated. Here's the blink forward. And this is going to be it. Burrowed Roach is just hiding and waiting. The Stalkers are dancing. They blink into the main base. This is crazy. He's got 27 blink Stalkers. They're going to be able to kill his hatchery in no time. 45 drones to 44 probes. It just does not matter because they're going to start to fall right now like dominoes. Like you said before, he's just waiting. GG. GG. Zest, three wins in a row. One win away for the all kill to take his, his team to win the first round playoffs with a 4-0. 4-0 is possible now. It's it's it almost seems likely with how well he's playing. Oh man, this guy looks so confident right now. He's playing incredibly well. All of these three games, such efficiently, awesomely well-timed builds, just taking down one after one after one, super strong. SKT players and you saw flash and stats in the booth over there just looking bored they're like well well done man I guess we're just gonna go home without doing anything like yeah. that uh, zest is really pulling this for for KT right now KT's got to be so happy I, I I think it's it's time for classic because classic is the is the player who can get a reverse all kill Harding, I do not think can do that. I don't think he's capable of it. He's got a lot of charisma. His builds are crazy and unpredictable, but I don't think he has uh, what it takes to get a reverse all kill. I think Classic does have what it takes. It's going to be a momentous task.